So now that we've done HTTP requests using the HTTP service, we actually wanna talk about doing something a little bit more effective. Now, uh, the long term, it's gonna be more effective and actually it's better for integrating with your API services. You still might need to use the HTTP service, but in this case, especially for posts or something that might be related to some sort of model data or an API data, we want to actually be able to integrate it just a little bit better by using Angular resource. So if you remember back, we actually added Angular resource in there because, well, we were planning on using it. And in this one, that's what we're going to be doing. We're actually going to be setting up the Angular resource stuff. And we're going to do this by creating a new folder inside of our app and we're going to call it core. And inside of core, this is where we're actually going to create another new folder and we're going to call this post like our blog posts. We're going to make a couple files in here. The first one being post.module.js and the next one being post.service.js. And the reason I'm putting it in something called core is because I'm gonna be putting my resources in the thing called core. That's really just a way to separate my resources out or the way this stuff's gonna to map to any given thing um, just to make it even more concise to the individual thing that it's gonna be doing. Like post, the post core service is really only gonna get the post items from whether it's an API service or right now it's gonna be through our actual post.json stuff. We would do this same sort of thing if we had comments where our actual controllers, that is um, having our actual components for the blog list, the blog detail would be separated out. Core is just gonna be something, the services that we'll be using to support the rest of the views and the way that things work. So in our post.modules.js, it's gonna be the same thing as our blog module, but instead of being blog list, we're gonna call it post and that's it. And then in service, we're gonna call it post still, but now instead of just using post, we're gonna use something called factory. So dot and then factory. And now I'm gonna use capital P for post. And I'm actually going to separate these things out just slightly and tab it in. Um, and then in here, this is where we're gonna be creating our resource. So we'll do comma function, and then our parentheses, and finally our semicolon there. So in here, we wanna actually add in a service called resource. So this resource service is actually gonna be what's returning our different things. So at the very end of this, we're gonna return the resource and we're gonna return some URL configuration if we have any of it. And then finally, we'll have our different shortcuts to actually run resource, such as query and get. These are the two that we're gonna be working off of and I'm gonna put empty dictionaries in them right now. Now let's go ahead and set this URL first. I'm gonna say var URL is equal to, well, it's going back to that post URL. So if we go into the detail, it's gonna be this URL right here. So let's go ahead and add that into our service. So this is getting our post list. Inside of now our resource, we have that URL set up. Inside of this resource, we can now add in the various things. So we can add in the HTTP method. In this case, it's gonna be get. We can add in parameters if we have any, any parameters. In this case, we're gonna have it empty. So it's like any sort of parameters that you wanna pass with your get requests. We can say is array. Now query by default is going to be array, but we'll just say true. We wanna cache these results. Well, with a list of blog items, we probably do wanna cache these results. So basically when the service is requesting these items, it doesn't have to request them as often from the backend service. All right, so we'll cache it. And then there's a few other things that I will mention that we're just not gonna cover yet, but it's transform response. And transform response will allow you to actually transform the HTTP response that comes through. And then the last one would be an interceptor. So if there's something with the actual 
um, request to the back end, this is the this would right here be able to intercept that request. So if there's an error, if the server's down or something like that, this interceptor would be able to handle all that stuff. Uh, but again, we're not going to talk about this here. It's just wanted to mention it to you. So it is there in the future. All right, so the get request, we're actually going to have it be the exact same. So there's now we have a query as well as a get. So these two things are going to be covering the same thing in this case. But really, when you get down to it, once we have a backend service, our parameters, I'm going to have just comment this out. We would do something like ID and then at ID. We do something like that to actually pass in that parameter and then we would change this to being false, right? So this stuff will be very clear once we integrate with the backend service, which again is something we're not gonna do until we integrate with our Django service, which is in a different series, but it's definitely something to note here so you know about it. Uh, and then a get call, if you're, especially if you're doing, you can, especially if you're doing a single item that's not an array, you might not wanna cache it, but I like to cache things just to make it speed up this everything there. Okay, so now that we've got this post service, we can do some things with it. Let's go ahead and first of all, add it into our actual index page. So our HTML page, and we're gonna add it in as, you know, core slash post slash post.module.js. Can delete the rest of this. And then we're gonna add it one more time, and that is gonna be service, okay? So now that we have this service, let's actually add the service into our component. So I'm gonna go into my blog detail module and in here, I'm gonna put a quote and capitalized P post. Um, now I can actually use this item inside of our controller as its own service. And I'm gonna put it first because it's my own custom service. And then I'm just gonna do console.log and post.query and then console.log post.get. Now, do note that these are the same that's coming through here. Another thing you can do is just the dollar sign query and the dollar sign get. So if we come back in, we can actually see the documentation for this as well. There's a lot of things that are going on here. Um, so you can actually research more about it if you look directly on the documentation. Um, I actually added something that we don't need to add and that's the, the dollar sign in front of those things. A mistake there. Um, and then we refresh now in our Angular. We get an unexpected identifier in post 16. So I made a little mistake there as well. So let's go back in the service. We want to make sure we have a comma here. And now this looks like a solid resource for us. So let's go back in and refresh. Now we don't have errors with the post service, but we might have some other errors. So let's go ahead and click on this. And we've got some errors as far as probably, this is probably related to actually how we passed in our post detail. So let's make sure we've got everything saved up um, on all the different areas. And we'll come back in here. Oops, this might be lowercase p. And that's what it was. All right, so we've got our lowercase p now. And in here we have some data that actually came back. So if we click on that, we see that the requests are the same. So when we did this service, both of these are the same. And therefore, when we go into the component itself, both of these are the same as well. So something I can do is now I can just do post.query and then write a function in here that's gonna handle that query. So this is gonna handle the actual data itself. So let's actually put just data here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and grab this for each item again, paste it in and just call this data. And let's see if this part works in particular. So we refresh. Looks like nothing changed. We didn't have any errors, but let's get rid of that HTTP call. Let's just comment it out for a second and refresh in here. Notice the data is still the same. In fact, if I went through and just commented all of that stuff out or removed it all, which is actually what I'm gonna do, you can check the GitHub repository for all this old code, but we don't need it in here any longer. We can now refresh and this is working. If I change the item number, um, it's not actually giving me an error because it actually is still getting data. So we do wanna actually put this back up and we'll say true. We could put it back into this for each. We probably should put it into this right before the, the for loop that is. 
just to make sure that that is working correctly. And we refresh. It looks like the, the not found is not working as we may want it to work for this, in, this item in particular, but that's okay. We will come back to that. Let's go back to our one. And if we refresh in here several times, it's still coming through. We might want to refresh in our other places to make sure that is all coming through and it has no errors as well. Um, so that is actually a lot cleaner of code now than what we had before. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, cool. The, the code's a little cleaner here. Well, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is now is going into the post list. So the blog list itself, we add post in here and then we come back into our component. We can use the service now of post and do the exact same thing. So going back into our detail, we can copy this here and we'll paste it in here. And now instead of items being blog items, right? So that's what we called it before. I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out and I'm gonna try something different and we'll just do post.query, save it, and we'll go back into our list, refresh, and now our post items are coming through just like that. So we actually don't need any of this stuff. Get rid of that. We no longer need these either. Or this other code. Again, GitHub will have all that. I just wanna clean it up, refresh, Look at that, now it is nice and clean. This is now our list view. We no longer need this either. And our resource now made all of the difference. This made everything happen here. So we click and now we can see this. This is not just useful for querying the database, but it's also for updating the database as well. So using post, so post, get, put, um, delete, all of those things this resource is what's actually gonna be doing it for us, uh, which is really, really nice. So to reiterate, the when we want to map our functions or if we wanna map Angular to a API service, we will build our own resource services that map to that API. So right now, this maps in some form or fashion to the API. We'll see this in much more detail when we actually map it to a RESTful service, a real RESTful service. But right now, what we see is it's actually mapped to that API. That's really, really important because then whenever we want to use it again, we can just do something this simple. One line for a list, very, very useful, very cool. Um, hopefully this is sinking in on how quick and useful Angular actually can be. If you have any questions on what we did with the resource stuff, let us know. Um, we will definitely do a lot more of this resource and I will, I do recommend, highly recommend that you read through the documentation for this resource. So it's basically creating this object as it says right here, it creates a resource object that lets you interact with the RESTful server side data sources. In this case, we don't have data sources. We're just using the JSON data. So just like with the HTTP stuff, we would be able to eventually have an actual server that takes over this stuff. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.